video, I want to show you the itinerary template that I made using Canva. So how this came about, so for years, probably I'd say about eight years, I've been using a combination of Excel and Microsoft Word. So if you follow my blog, you might recall when I did post about my Word template and then also Excel. So how they uh, come about is <laughs> I'm very type A and I love to plan very detailed itineraries. So I mainly use the Excel spreadsheets for my research. And then I go really detailed doing day-to-day -day, like scheduled itineraries that include all booking information, what's the temperature at the destination, how do I get there, like transport options, all that sort of stuff. So for years I've been using a combination of the two. And I have been taking a lot of trips since COVID, which means I've been away from my day job quite a bit. People have gotten wind at work that I do lots of trips and they've been asking me for my itineraries. It's kind of annoying sending the two files and you sort of got to explain how they, how I like use them and how they work. And they're like, can you just do one template in Canva? Um, and I was at a college and she's like, I want to make an itinerary and then like gift it to my sister. And like your itinerary is really functional, but it's not really pretty. And I was like, mm, okay, fair point. So she's like, can you just do it in Canva? I was like, okay, look, I don't mind making templates. So I'll just do one in Canva. And I actually really like how it turned out. So I managed to merge the research with the itinerary pages and some of the good things about Canva. And I can see why they wanted me to do it in Canva rather than Word and Excel. You can easily just rearrange your pages. So how I have set this example itinerary up, which you'll notice is very Paris themed, one of my favorite cities. I have all of like the trip overview, the actual itinerary, and then I have research pages organized into you know category. You can arrange this however you want. If you want to put your checklist at the front, however you want to arrange them, you can just left click and drag. And it's really easy to rearrange pages. You can easily just make duplicate copies of pages. So I do really like that functionality of Canva. It's also an online um, tool so you can edit it you know, from wherever you just need an internet connection. And when you download it with this itinerary, I've included hyperlinks to everything. So if you wanted to use this digitally on the go instead of printing, you can easily navigate it on your phone, iPad, whatever. Um, or of course you can download to a PDF and print it, which is what I tend to do because I'm a little old school with the paper there. Um, but all of these little icons that you see in the corners of all of the pages, they're all hyperlinked back to a contents page. And I've also given instructions in the um, download for how to link up all of your daily itineraries as well back to the main contents page that I've created for your each day itinerary. So while obviously I'm quite detailed and I do big trips, so I generally, if I'm going to go overseas, it has to be three weeks or more. Otherwise, the cost of long haul flights out of Australia just totally makes the trip cost not worthwhile. It's so expensive, so usually three to four weeks. So I do plan quite long trips. But if you wanted to just do like a week long trip or a weekend trip, you can do that as well. You can delete any of the pages in here that don't suit you. Um, it's very easy to customize it. And I will admit, I think it's a lot easier to make those sorts of changes and tweak it to suit any itinerary than the word format. I do still love Excel. I loved using Excel for comparisons. I do still think the Excel template is better for that. Um, it's like this one here for flight comparisons because I do find the table tool a little clunky in Canva. But once they've been set up, then it's quite easy to populate the table itself. So that's why I've gone and done all those set up for you. And then now you can just plug in your information and make copies and customize it however you want. So it is quite detailed. And I've got the template at the back here. Anywhere where you see this sky, grass, clouds, that just is an indication of where you can put an image or maybe you want to put a walking route map that you've made in Google My Maps. I've got a tutorial for that as well. So you can customize it quite easily. And if you don't like a certain element on the template, maybe you don't want to put photos here, well, you can just delete them off. It's quite easy to do that. So now that you've had a little overview of the pages, let's do a more close up look. So I'm just going to go from, you can kind of see what the cover page options look like. Uh, I'm just going to go from the content. So all of these are hyperlinked. So when it wants to load, if you click on something here, you can see that it's got this link to page 40. So if you click that, it's going to jump to page 40. Um, so it's quite easy to navigate and you can easily add links yourself as well. If you just right click on whatever you want to link, you can even link this image if you want. You just right click, choose, well, I've got a link there already, but you'd go edit link and then you just pick the place where it goes in the document. So it's really quick and easy to do. So I do really like that because previously I was using the headings tool in Microsoft Word to navigate, which is also very helpful, but it does get quite long 
um, names because I put where I'm going, um, the day, like the date and the day of the week. And it can be a little long. You have to have this out quite wide. And I do like being able to just have the clickable link. So I, I will admit, I do love that feature in Canva. <clears throat> so if we continue down here, I've given a few examples of some different methods that I've used for setting up my itineraries over the years. So maybe you want to do just some highlights or you want to do it spelled out by week, where you're going, what you're doing. If you were doing, say, a longer trip, so this one is mapped out for four weeks, you can just click that button there and duplicate it. And then you can change this to then become week five, change the days and so on. You can also change all of the fonts if you don't like the font that I have chosen. You just click on the font here and then choose whatever font you want from the list and a button will come up which should give you the option to change all down here and then you can quickly just reformat the whole document to whatever you want it to look like if you don't like the font that I've chosen. So if you've got a week-long trip, you could use this template so you get the idea if you like doing pictures or you want to make like a scrapbook or maybe you want to add this into a travel photo book as like a journal of what you did, you can use it for that as well. And oh, to be honest, my favorite one, because I'm very functional, but if you want the pictures, obviously you can use these. Um, but this one, I'll be honest, is the main one that I use. I've got what day of the trip, so day one, two, etc., the date, and then what is on the agenda, and just a brief overview. And then I'll go and do a whole separate page for planning each of these things. So just like having a nice list that just neatly summarizes what I'm doing and when and like I was talking about earlier all of these little icons that you see here they're all hyperlinked back to that contents page for quick navigation as well and if you duplicate a page like all those links are maintained so it makes it really easy to quickly customize it. it's not like clunky to edit so that's good more overview pages any of these like full page ones with the titles, you can change them to be whatever you want. So I have it for my destination. So if you are visiting multiple countries, maybe you'll have a different cover page for each country, maybe a different one for each city. Totally up to you how you want to customize it. I've used a lot of the images that come with Canva and admittedly some of them are pro versions. So if you only have the free version of Canva, some of these images might not show, but you can always add images that you've seen online while you're researching and I'll show you that later because I have a photo spots template I've gotten really OCD about getting the perfect shot so I like to have my photos that I want to like replicate and ideas and addresses of where those photos were taken so you can always upload your own um, photos that you find on the internet and add them in here or you can just go um, let's go Paris or wherever your destination is if you see this little crown here, that means it's the pro version. But if you click this button here and you just go free, then it will only show you the free images. And there's still some quite nice ones. So let's say I wanted to use this one. You just left click and drag and drop it in. And you'll notice you might need to do some tweaking because this is such a large size. So if you double left click, you'll bring up the edit menu and you can just drag it to however you want it to look. And then you've just quickly customized it. Then I go into each of my destinations. So I like to have a little overview page giving me some information about where we're going. So the dates of the visit, which becomes quite helpful when I'm booking accommodation. I have yet to make the mistake, but I do freak out every time that I'm going to book accommodation for the wrong date. So I just like to have that written out. I like to do the season, things like temperatures, what's happening, if there's any planned strikes, main things you want to see. You can customize this again however you want. There's just things that I like to record about each destination up to you. You can delete this whole box if you don't want it. You can very easily customize it. Then we've got some example pages of how I do my daily itineraries. So again, up to you how much detail you want to do. You might be more of a visual person and you just want a walking route map. This is what I was talking about before and I'll have that link to the tutorial on how to make one of these in Google My Maps. And that's just an image that I've uploaded and then like I did here, dragged and dropped it in. And then I have just a little schedule but for me, that's not enough um, detail. I want instructions on like what train to catch to get from 
you know, here over here. And I like to just have that all with me because I don't want to be wasting time on my phone figuring out logistics. I can do that from my computer before I go and then I fully maximize my time in that place because I only get four weeks annual leave per year and if I want to take any more holidays than that, it's unpaid leave, which obviously I don't want to do. So really need to make sure that I fully maximize every day and you can see that I really like to pack it in. If you don't want to do that, obviously you can customize it however you want, um, but these examples are, are quite full on days. This one here was a day trip that I did to the Lawyer Valley, probably pronounced that wrong, and then I had each of the chateaus that were included in the tour that I booked and a few little like helpful info and tips and things and some places that I wanted to do photos. I love a viewpoint. Absolutely love a viewpoint. That's a must have for me. And some of these chateaus have really nice viewpoints. Some of them don't. So when you start to research, you'll see there is quite a lot of chateaus that you can do as day trips from Paris. And I was getting confused. I'm like, I'm going to put all my research notes in here. So I've got that with me. When I'm there, I know exactly what I'm doing once I get to these chateaus because you'll find on a lot of day trips, there's not a lot of time. And I really hate wasting time doing the logistics. I want to have it all organized before I go. This is what I was talking about with the photo inspo. So some photos I found on the internet, some ones that I wanted to replicate. And I did get all of these shots so I could upload my own photos, you know, if I wanted to. But obviously this is done before I go on the trip. But you can use that if you wanted to, I don't know, turn this into a photo book and you put little captions on it or whatever you want to do. Then this one here is a slightly different format for a day trip. This one I had it split out into morning, afternoon and evening. And you can see I put in you know, like some restaurants and whatever else I'm doing. So totally up to you how you want to organize it. Maybe you prefer some visuals. So there's some different ideas there and you can just pick and choose which ones work for your planning style. I have some information on viewpoints because again, absolutely love a viewpoint. And if there's entry fees, opening times and hours, closest metro stops, all that stuff. And then that helps form what I'm going to do each day because I like to cluster things by location. So I don't want to be going all the way from the Arc de Triomphe then over to Montparnasse, I probably pronounce all the stuff wrong. Like I want to do all of the attractions that are together instead of wasting time on the train. And by putting in, you know, addresses and all this sort of info, it's really helpful to plan a very efficient itinerary, which has no wasted time. This was to my earlier where you want to put your address of where the photo you know, was taken, best time of day, maybe the sunlight's really bad at, I don't know, two o'clock or something. So if you look up people's like photography blogs, they can give you lots of that helpful info and you can populate that here. Another divider cover page, flight routes. So it's probably not as big a deal if you're only going short distances, like if you're traveling to Europe and you live in Europe. But for me, long hauls can be quite annoying to plan, making sure that you've got enough of a layover and what connections and then which route is you know more affordable. So I do like to map out my flight routes in quite a lot of detail. I used to do that with train routes as well. Accommodation, you can put in all of your bookings or you can also use this for your research. You could put in whatever notes that you want. In particular, is record if there's luggage storage and you know, free Wi-Fi. Tour bookings, if you've got any day trips, you can have your quick info in there and your booking references. Any other attraction bookings that you've pre-done on via tour or get your guide. Um, also, is good if you want to make this a checklist of things that you need to book. Restaurants that you want to go to, I highly recommend this Italian restaurant if you go to Paris. I went there like four nights in a row. Um, checklist, so if you don't want to leave anything to the last minute, I have a countdown. So we have week before, a few days before, departure day, all your other documents. Again, you can type whatever you want. So you can see this says type here. You can put whatever you need to put in there that's applicable to you. And I also have a fully fresh blank one if you prefer that as well. And then if you want to put a person responsible, so if you're going on a big group trip, um, you can add that in here. You can put due dates on things if they're done. So that's good if you're planning a trip with other people. A to-do list, and I've put it by category, so things you know that you need to book, research, and an open-ended one. Budget, done in all different categories, transport, accommodation, food, pre-trip, etc. You can put your budget actual and then your difference amount and see how you're going. You can compare all of your accommodation. And like I was saying earlier with the dates, I always like to put in my check-in, my check-out date, number of nights, and then have my cost. And then I can see, okay, maybe it's cheaper if I did, I don't know, two nights somewhere instead of 
um, three, can I compress it? Or maybe this other um, location, maybe I know like Bruges might be cheaper than Brussels, for example, but they're very close and you can easily just get on a train and go from one to the other. You know, that kind of comparison, then you can do that on this spreadsheet, well, not spreadsheet, um, this table here, which is what I would previously do in my spreadsheets. And I'm just going to give you a quick look of the others because I feel like you're probably starting to get the idea. And at this point, you probably just want to see the examples instead of me talking about all of them. Spending tracker, flight routes research. I do have more photos of each of these on my blog as well. Obviously, you can just pause the video if you want to see um, these in more detail, like some things that I put in my research notes and how I organize them all. There's some URL links if you do purchase um, the template, some links to some helpful um, blog posts that I have that you might want to read if you want to compare research. Now, this one here is a new addition. So previously, I didn't have a um, comparison or any sort of uh, specific research page for multi-day organized itineraries. So I do not want to drive overseas. I hate driving. I don't even have a car. I avoid it all the time. I just hate it. It's an annoying way to get from A to B. So if I can avoid driving, I will. And I particularly do not want to drive overseas. Oh my God, the thought of driving in America on the opposite side of the road is completely overwhelming for me. I just won't do it. It's not even a question. So I always join a bus tour if I'm going to do places that are logistically difficult to get to, which unfortunately is quite a lot of them in the US. I mean, you can always fly into somewhere, but then how are you going to get around unless it's a city? If you want to go to like the cute little towns, you can't really do that. So that's when I join a multi-day tour and one that I want to do this year is this one for autumn colors so I love the little maps that they always put from whatever tour company Globus this one's Trafalgar Cosmos whatever so I pop that in here I've got an overview of the itinerary I have some of the highlights of where we would be going link to it and then some questions that I might want to ask and check pros and cons and then I will do this for each of the tours that I'm comparing and then I also have this summary table here where I can just put the highlights as well. So you can see some of the other tours that I was comparing. So they're all nine days, but they stop in different places and they have different prices. So that's been a really helpful template to compare which one I want to do. And if you wanted to do that for day trips and smaller organized tours, I have another template for that as well. And you can see, you know, how long is it? What's the cost? When's it operating? All that sort of stuff. Some language, which you might remember from the Word um, itinerary template, which is just handy to have on hand when you're on the trip or if you're trying to learn some language before you go. Packing list is obviously super helpful. I have it categorized. And then I also have a blank one if you want to choose your own or put your own headings. So it's very easy to customize in Canva. And I've tried to make it really easy for you to efficiently create your itinerary with a mix of pre-filled templates and then also blank ones and the ability for you to just edit it as you please. Travel insurance, some comparisons and notes there, car rental, and then the back cover and then we have all of these templates. So you can delete any of these pages if you want. You just press the little delete button there. You can duplicate, add, rearrange. It's really easy to customize. So I'm quite pleased with this template. I'm going to use it for one of my future trips. I'm thinking my US trip. Um, so hopefully then once I finish that one, I can share that on the blog and you can download it um, and then it'll be even easier to customize because at the moment when I share my itineraries, they're in Word and then I'll give you a link to the PDF file, which I understand is not as ideal if you want to you know, customize it. Um, so Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it gave you some ideas for planning your um, itinerary. And if you like the template that I've made in Canva, I'll have a link down below to where you can purchase it from my shop. And I'll also have a link to the blog post, which will have a bit more info about you know, the pages as well. Um, if you missed anything in the video or you don't want to rewatch the video, but you just want to find out a bit more about maybe one or two of the pages or whatever, I'll have that link below as well. And any questions, just let me know. My email address is allaboutplanners at gmail.com.